Wouldn't it be great when we get to heaven and there are no more arguments about which style of music is best? No one to tell us that the music was too loud or too soft? No more church members who don't like the songs we choose? No more disagreements with our pastor about how long we should sing? Heaven is going to be awesome. But you may have noticed we aren't there yet. And in the meantime, God has put people all around us to help us grow and become more like His Son. And how we relate to them is one of the most important aspects of being a worship leader. When Jesus was asked, what's the greatest commandment? He actually gave us two. Loving God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength is the first and greatest commandment. But in Matthew 22, he added, the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Our temptation is to think that worship is all about me and God. Actually, it's about us and God. John tells us in his first letter that he who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. Jesus told us that if we come to offer our gift at the altar but remember that our brother is offended with us, we need to go make it right first. Love your neighbor as yourself. So how do we love ourselves? Well, we encourage ourselves. We want to do our best, but we're forgiving when we don't. We believe the best about our motives. We give ourselves a break when we've worked hard. We want to see ourselves succeed. Now, let me ask you a question. Is that the way you treat the people around you? Do you encourage the members of your team pointing out the ways that God's working in them? Do you seek to understand the people in your congregation before criticizing them? Do you believe the best about your pastor's motives when he asks you to leave out a song? Do you make room for others who might be more gifted than you and eventually take your place? These are tough questions. But they're important questions. And unless we're seeking to glorify God in our relationships, we're falling short of what God has called us to be as worship leaders. Someone told me that the average time of employment for a music minister is two years. Two years. I'm sure there are some good reasons for that, but I can't help but wonder if part of the reason is that we aren't taking Jesus' command to love one another as he has loved us seriously. What would happen if we put as much passion into encouraging our team as we do planning our songs? How would the members of your church respond if you thanked them when they suggested ways you could improve? What would your pastor say if you consistently asked him how you could do better and didn't react when he suggested changes? I can't say exactly what all the effect of this would be, but I know this. It would bring as much praise to the Savior, if not more, than anything we might do on a Sunday morning.